Hello everyone, ready for this video? So, on today's video we will see all the different uh, antidepressant tracks in each class and see the little differences between them because on the last video we have seen already the main difference between each class of antidepressants so now we can go a bit deeper, let's go for it! So, let's start with the SSRI, so the Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors so, let's start with Fluoxetine. Fluoxetine is known to be the one with the longest half time. So, if you look how it starts, it's flu, fluoxetine. So you can think a, a flu normally lasts around one week. And that's exactly the half time of fluoxetine. Then peroxetine. Peroxetine is almost the opposite. It is one that contains a really short half time period. So, because it's really quick absorbed, we will have uh, a higher amount of drug in a shorter amount of time so because of that it presents also a higher amount of side effects then sertraline sertraline is the best when there are some comorbid heart problems, heart diseases so that's normally the chosen one when that happens and also sertraline is known to be the best one for women who is pregnant or breastfeeding citalopram and citalopram basically Escitalopram is just an antiomer of the citalopram. So, these ones are uh, considered by many psychiatrists the first line agent because it's the one that is best tolerated. And especially the citalopram, that's the cleanest one in terms of drug interactions. And lastly, we've got fluvoxamine. Fluvoxamine, it was actually the first SSRI to be done and nowadays it's not much used because it requires normally three times a day uh, dosage and there are many side effects with it. However, sometimes it can be seen for patients with obsessive compulsive disorder, so OCD. Then we got the SNRIs, so serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors. So basically they will not only um, inhibit the uptake of serotonin but also noradrenaline. So the serotonin is known to be the happiness neurotransmitter, so the one that gives us satisfaction, whilst the noradrenaline is the one that gives us strength and activates all the body uh, to tackle any situation. So this drug tackles both neurotransmitters, basically increases them in the synapse, the gap between the neurons. So, by doing that, it's by itself maybe a better antidepressant, but there are some side effects associated with the fact that we increase the noradrenaline, and they should be taken into account. Let's start with the Velafaxin. So, Velafaxin is quite widely prescribed, it's a very good antidepressant, however, we need to keep an eye for hypertension, because it increases the noradrenaline in the synapse, the noradrenaline can have some effect in the cardiovascular system, uh, in us the heart rate and also make some vasoconstriction in our vessels so the blood pressure can go higher. That's not a reason not to prescribe this drug. However, if a patient has got a history of hypertension, then it shouldn't be given. The second one is duloxetine. So, duloxetine, in addition to its indication for depression, it can also be used uh, for pain. So if you think duloxetin starts with du, so you can associate du with pain uh, and then its indication is in neuropathic pain that can be used as well and also can be used for stress incontinence. And the next class is the TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants. But before we jump into this new class, uh, let me just encourage you to give a like to this video and if you are enjoying it, subscribe to the channel. So let's go to the tricyclic antidepressant. 